I remember during the time of E3 of this year when Google announced Stadia and how it is going to be the next big thing for playing AAA games especially in third world countries like India which is my motherland by the way I think at this point of time this is going to be far from truth and especially in India given the way it is going to be working in the US from the pricing to the technological problems Stadia is going to face a lot of problems and I think it requires fundamental changes before it can even enter or even plan to enter the Indian market. In this video, I will be discussing about these obstacles which will prevent Stadia from entering the Indian market. Now, let's go with the first thing that is pricing. Now, in US, Google has priced Stadia Pro at $10 per month, which is $120 per annum. Now, this is half the price of PlayStation Plus and Xbox Live. They have actually more features as Yong Ye made a video about it and compared these three services and how PlayStation Plus and Xbox Live actually offers more with less price. So if you want to watch that video, the link is in the description. You can watch it after this video. But instead of comparing the services, let's really see how it affects me as an Indian. $120 is roughly around 8400 rupees if i assume a dollar to be 70 rupees and with this money you can actually buy some decent upgrades for your personal computer you can easily change upgrade your ram and a graphic card with this price and trust me there are actually pretty good parts you can buy in india for very less price especially the chinese parts that you can get on amazon and uh, ebay when stadia will hit india obviously the price is going to decrease but I don't really expect it is going to be anywhere less than 7,000. And as I mentioned before, Google Stadia is not the Netflix for gaming. It is another storefront for gaming like Steam and good old games and HIO with an additional gimmick of playing games on the cloud. That is the only gimmick I actually find on Google Stadia. And apart from pricing, let's even talk about the payment options which Steam outdoes Stadia in many ways. And this is also the fact that Steam does not even operate properly in India, Valve does not have any office in India, while Google actively works with Indian consumers. And this is something which is very insane. And the only way to pay on Google services is through GPay, which is their UPI app for payments on Google services. Now Steam actually offers more than that. Apart from uh, paying via UPI, you can actually pay through domestic wallets, even domestic debit cards like Rupee in India, which is nice, and even through cash. Uh, they have cash on delivery system in India. And on top of that, uh, Valve is the only digital video game storefront that actually strictly adheres to the RBI guidelines when it comes to online purchases which sadly is not in Google and this is despite the fact that Google operates actively in India. We have offices in India and apart from that they are actively working with Indian consumers on YouTube. Uh, they are actively supporting the Indian creators through FanFest and whatnot and a lot of their services even their search engine capabilities offer a lot of regional search results. So this is something which is very paradoxical when it comes to purchasing over Google services. So if any one of you so far is being disturbed by all the background noise and the wind, I'm sorry but I'm actually recording this on a rooftop because that is the only place where I can easily record my voiceovers b uh, without looking like an idiot. So moving on to the internet connection consistency, which has become very consistent in this decade, especially in the later part of the decade after 2015 and especially after the advent of Reliance Geo. However, even with this consistency, the problem actually lies with the internet speed. And the internet speed is not that good enough. It's nowhere near good enough to get it running at 720p, 60fps. And according to the infograph, it requires 10 megabits per second. Now at best, I've actually hit around 5 Mbps with my LTE connection on my mobile phone. Which was very fast when I experienced that for the first time. And now they actually demand a lot more. 
that is only possible with a Wi-Fi connection. And that basically defeats the purpose in many cases because you have to be on one place to actually play the game. You cannot play games on the go like the way you can do it with Nintendo Switch or with traditional mobile games. So this playing on multiple screens gimmick falters pretty hard in India. Not to mention there are places where you can literally cannot even access internet connection. There are dead zones in the internet connection in India where you cannot access internet connections. And I'm not even talking about like specialized military bases or something like that. I'm talking about just regular residential areas where internet connection can be a problem for certain ISPs. Now since we are dealing with a cloud-based platform, the obvious problem comes to the ownership. In this case, you are just having the access to play the game. You are not having a digital copy, so that's going to be a problem in some cases. And one of the worst cases is if Stadia goes down. Because keep in mind, gaming industry is notorious when it comes to video game archival. Uh, from the way Nintendo is fighting against emulation to simply abusing DRMs the way Ubisoft has done with Assassin's Creed it's pretty obvious that gaming industry is not interested in archiving video games for future generations or making any ways to make them uh, accessible in case they do not want to continue with the services this actually comes uh, as a problem with games as service in general and this games as service is also the problem where the Google, where Stadia comes because you are having an intermediate service that allows you to play games through their uh, data centers. Now this point doesn't really affect Stadia directly, but since we are the ones who are, who are going to use this platform, it's pretty obvious that this will affect Stadia in any way. However, this one is not local but a global problem. The design aspect actually is one of the biggest problems that Stadia will face. The problem is, since it is going to be a cloud-based platform and it is going to adapt to different screens and architectures, Google has to work a lot when it comes to making Stadia accessible to game designers and game engine developers so that they can easily port their games to the platform. In this case, Stadia has to become less of a service and make itself more like a platform, like a virtual console or something. Just like we have uh, fantasy consoles like Pico 8, Tic 80 and whatnot, they all work on different architectures, but, uh, but fundamentally we are programming it for one platform. And that's exactly what Stadia has to be working for. While the Stadia app should be made for uh, different architectures there has to be a way where games can be easily programmed directly to Stadia and Stadia can act as a mediator between them. Now this is pretty obvious because that is the way that will make Google Stadia's actual gimmick work and now the problem will come from the games themselves. The games has to be created in a way that can uh, be playable while changing screens on the fly. And that does not come from a uh, frame rate because most, keep in mind, most of the computing is already done from the data centers. The problem will come from the uh, visibility point of view. Maybe when you change, uh, go from a PC to a mobile phone, the screen becomes just too crowded to look at. Maybe uh, everything what seems to be visible on your 55 a uh, 55 inch screen TV but will now seems to be very cramped and you will have a hard time to focus on things. In this case I can suggest that on different architectures there should be some settings for changing the field of view so that it becomes a lot more visible for people uh, once they change the screens which will basically keep the pacing of the game as well as make the game more playable and gives optimal information to the player of their surroundings. Now this comes from both sides as gamer and a game developer. Why the hell should I care? What is about Stadia so special that I can deeply care about it? I mean, why should I pay $10 a month for the service? I mean, it has to go beyond features. How does it going to feel? Is it worth more than $10? 
or it is worth going to be worth less than ten dollars or maybe maybe it is fairly priced as a game developer is it worth my effort to port game to this platform even though it seems ubiquitous you can just make one game and deploy it everywhere the question is how can i make my game work on this platform in the most efficient way and is it going to be worth my time or i can just simply pop in the native port and just enjoy it there are a lot of questions that come into my mind and let's be honest they should be now as about trust i think the best case study can come from this country and that is through the telecom industry now telecom industry just like the rest of the world is god freaking awful no matter where you are in the world there's always an issue in india the exorbitant price and god awful speed is a problem here some and the data inconsistency is a big issue here and not only that but if you uh, back in 2015 one gigabyte a month was a goddamn luxury back then and the entire market got disrupted by a newly acquired startup called geo by reliance and you know what they did to promote the services it was not just some public announcement or a pre-order thing they just handed out free sim cards to people yes that is right free sim cards for everybody as long as you are aged above 18 and have some sort of government issued proof like a voter card driving license or an aadhar card you can just easily get that sim card for free for some months during the initial 3 months my brother uh, got one of those on the other hand when i uh, and even after some time it was priced at a very nominal price of 100 rupees i bought the sim card for that price and when i started it for first 3 months you can get unlimited access of that high speed lte connection for free that's it you pay the initial cost of the 100 rupees and there you go that's how my experience with jio started and this 3 months free thing extended to almost 6 months and we had all of the fun man i guess it started all the way from september to somewhat in june and somewhat till march i'm not going really into detail but the thing is when they finally revealed the price after the free connection it was very nominal it was completely unexpected and nobody thought that this was even possible now i remember my father used to pay around 3 uh, 5 to 600 rupees for 1 gigabyte a month and this was half the price and that was just for a day 1 and a half gigabytes a day man now that's a deal this was completely un- unexpected for anybody in india especially because we have our own gripes for telecom industry and now even today other telecom operators like airtel vodafone and what not have their own problems and they are literally <laughs> fighting for their existence at this point market has been disrupted in an irreparable manner now the entire ecosystem has been changed but in any way you can actually see that how people started trusting jio for its lte connections when everybody was cynical about it and considering that 3g was like the freaking fast thing and it was a price at an exorbitant price and there comes 4g with a lot lower price uh, price tag that nobody expected now i'm not sure about 5g but it's going to be priced at more or less the same price so that is it now let me know what you think about google stadia will it work in india or will it turn into an epic fail now i was looking at my youtube analytics recently and i found out that most of my viewers are identified from ecuador despite the fact that most of my lang- uh, most of my videos are catered towards indian users for some reason there are people watching videos from latin america so if you are from ecuador then let me know in the comments and uh, there's a poll up there in the i button just to know that which language will you prefer so that i will uh, change the audio language or add subtitles accordingly 
And this will help, this will help me to, to create the content according to my target audience and it will help you guys to enjoy the content at its fullest. And I honestly do not know how to end this video, so... Okay, yeah, whatever.